Who would have guessed that Uggs are such a controversial thing? I just thought Uggs were the ugly shoes that smelled like death that girls wore through the 2000 and 2010s. But no, there's like legal battles. It dates all the way back to the early 1900s. And there's back and forth, several brands claiming that they're the original Uggs. And then there's lawsuits, there's trademarks. It's chaotic. So we're gonna go over all of that to really figure out who is the real Uggs and who makes the best Uggs. And thanks to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Factor, if you don't know, is an easy meal kit delivery service that's super convenient because they literally ship it right to your front door. And the cool thing is it's not frozen. So you grab your box and throw it in your refrigerator. And then at any point during the week, you need a meal, you grab it out of the fridge, throw it in the microwave for a few minutes. And because it's not frozen, it tastes really, really good. I think that's the difference. And they have tons of options. They have keto, they got low calorie, vegan, vegetarian lifestyle. And it's super flexible, it fits your lifestyle because of all that. They have 27 plus meals each week to choose from. And the meal plans range from four meals a week to 18 meals a week. Like for me, I just like to have dinner ready, you know, so I do like five, six meals a week and that's plenty for me. But the beauty of it is, if say I got way too busy or I needed more calories because I actually started working out for once in my life, I could adjust that on the fly, get more meals coming, pause it if it's a busy time of year, if I'm just out of town. But one thing about Factor is it's not cheap, but I promise it's way cheaper than food like app deliveries that, that I get like 11 o'clock at night, I have something delivered. It's significantly more healthy, it's way cheaper. And at the end of the day, if I calculated how much I spent on delivery apps compared to Factor, I spend two to three times more per meal with a delivery app compared to Factor. So get 50% off your first Factor box and a free wellness shot for life using the link in the description. That means you can choose from two free wellness shots of the three available flavors in every single one of your orders while you have an active subscription. So click the link in my description or scan the QR code on screen with your phone and thanks again to Factor. So who are the main players in this story? Well, you have the Springthorps with Uggs since 1974 from Australia. We have Brian Smith with Uggs Holding Incorporated from the US. And then the third is all the other brands making Ugg boots basically since the beginning and the invention of, of Uggs. And so it's not as simple as one brand versus another because 50 years before any form of controversy in the 1920s in Australia, sheepskin boots were well known in rural communities and areas, especially with sheep shearers because wool lanolin, the oil that's produced by wool, would drop onto their clothes and onto their boots and it would rot and slowly disintegrate the, the shoes and the boots that they're wearing. And at some point, someone realized that if they made boots out of sheepskin that the lanolin came from, there's a good chance that they wouldn't rot and completely fall apart. And basically from day one, there were people claiming to be the original makers of Uggs because of this. The first claim that's been, that we found was as early as 1933 by Blue Mountains Ugg Boots of New South Wales. Another claim a couple decades later in the late 1950s with Frank Mortel of Mortel's Sheepskin Factory says that they started making them and they were responsible for coining the term Ugg Boots. And because his wife allegedly saw the very first pair that they made and they thought she thought they were completely ugly, Ugg boots, ugly boots. Other unsubstantiated claims refer back to Fug boots, which were worn by the Royal Air Force in World War I. So people can't even agree, basically from day one, who, who invented this style of boot and who came up with the name Uggs and where it even came from. So we're already off to a super confusing start, but it really wasn't that big of a deal at the time because Uggs weren't the scarf and latte giant that they are today. They were mostly worn by rural communities, sheep herders, and almost exclusively in Australia. But this Ugg style first saw its big jump in popularity when the, in the 1950s and the 1960s, Australian surfers adopted them because they needed a warm boot as they walked down to the beat in the cold morning trying to catch that first wave or whatever they do. And there were several companies making them and nobody really claimed them as the brand Ugg boots. They were separate brands making Ugg boots. And so by the 1970s, Ugg boots had become commonplace throughout all of Australia, not just with the rural communities and surfers, but almost every household had one because Ugg boots accounted for 10% of Australian footwear production. And people started to take notice and saw an opportunity here. And this is where the real problems begin. Because in 1974, Arthur and Faye Springthorpe, one of the big players that we mentioned at the top of this section, founded Uggs since 1974, an Australian brand, drawing from Arthur's experience as a wool classer in the shearling sheds of New South Wales. And Uggs since 1974 flourished in Australia and they were able to grow a team and specialize in sheepskin and shearling goods. 
but they were not the only ones that saw this opportunity. And again, during the 1970s, many of these small Australian brands started to pop up and started to uh, started to pop up and started to spread their influence, not just in Australia, but across the world, including Uggs and Rugs, Country Leather, and about as many other combinations of and uses of the word Uggs as you can imagine. And there were so many brands using this generic term Uggs to describe the shearling slip-on boots that the word UG, U-G, was added to the Australian dictionary. So that's how commonplace this word was and that's how little ownership any of these Australian brands thought they had on the word. And soon after, the real muddling and trademark battle started because in 1978, Australian surfer Brian Smith, who was living in Santa Monica, California at the time, decided to start his own company importing Australian Uggs into the United States with his colleague Doug Jensen and they called their company Uggs Holding Incorporated and they decided to register the word UGG as their own trademark. And so you can understand why all these Australian brands are like, hey, that's just a word. You can't trademark a commonly used word to describe a general product. But ultimately there was very little they could do, especially with the trademark in the United States. But in 1984, it got even worse for the Australian brands because US-based US Brian Smith got the trademarks for original UGG boot UGG Australia and UGG Holding Incorporated because he saw the coming tide of all these Australian brands slowly creeping their way into the United States and he wanted to stop that at all costs so that he could own the entire US market and potentially the entire world market. Because across the world, UGG makers were starting to pop up trying to corner the prospective markets like in England in 1990, the Whitworths bought shoe manufacturer Hide and Feet who had been making sheepskin boots since 1973 and registered the term UGG, U-G-G, as a trademark in the United Kingdom. And then in 1991, they changed the name of the company to The Original UGG Company. So you can see already, there's UK is claiming stuff, US is claiming stuff, Australia is claiming stuff. So there's this big global battle to own the word UGG to sell this one particular style of boot. So clearly battle lines were being drawn and assets were being accumulated for this future battle for world UGG domination. And just a few years later, in August of 1995, the real war began after Ryan Smith of UGG Holdings Incorporated in the United States, which became a very sizable and successful company, he sold the company to the corporate giant Decker Outdoor Corporations, parent company of other brands that you've probably heard of like Hoka, Teva, Sanuk, Sanuk, or however you say that. Decker's then owned the largest distribution and supply chain network in the United States. But more importantly, this corporate giant now owned the term UGG. With the goal of turning UGG into a household name similar to what they did with Teva, so they started pouring in millions and millions of dollars into marketing and advertising. And by 1999, another significant change happened in the UGG war when Decker purchased that UK based, the original UGG Co. and their associated trademarks. And shortly after, the biggest blow to every other UGG's brand on the market happened when the US based UGG's got a protective trademark of the word UGG, not just in the United States, but in Australia effectively taking the rights from every Australian brand to sell a uniquely Australian product and all the other Australian manufacturers had to quit using the name UGG overnight. Even though Decker had no real connection or significance to Australia and the original UGGs. And this news came as quite a shock obviously and was devastating to a lot of the mom and pop shops that were making this style of boot and even some of the larger corporations had to completely change what they did overnight. So brands like UGG since 1974, one of the big players that we mentioned, no longer could use their own name in their own country. They couldn't even call them UGGs. The commonly known term, the general term for this style of boot, which people have been calling them since the early 1900s, they had to quit calling them that. So you can understand the anger and frustration and why there were several attempts to retake that lost ground. And over the next few years, they tried and tried again without a single victory. And so brands like the Australian UGG since 1974 had to create sister brands to keep their company afloat and to continue to sell the product in the country it came from with the name that it was originally. So they changed their name to Wild Wool Australia, hence Wild Wool Australia. And by the early 2000s, all this work that Decker had put in finally was starting to pay off as UGG's popularity had it completely blown up and was seen on celebrities of the time like Paris Hilton, Vanessa Hudgens, I don't know who that is, Kim Kardashian, and all the other celebrities that made these a 14 year old's dream. But all the other brands were far from giving up hope and in 2006, 
Ongoing efforts were made to reverse at least the Australian trademark and finally a win. The Australian legal system determined that the word UG, UG boots and uh, UG, U-G-H boots and any other derivative of those phrases is generic and descriptive in nature and therefore cannot be owned by a single company or singular company. Which meant now finally the brand Wild Wool Australia, formerly known as UGG since 1974, got the original name back and was finally able to sell only in Australia under the name of UGG since 1974. And for the rest of the world, they still had to go under the name of Wild Wool Australia, even though they're made in the same factory, the same way, from the same materials, side by side, they have to call it a different name. And they may have won the battle, but the war was far from over because Decker still had protections in the United States, which included online sales and this billion dollar Decker Corporation sent several cease and desist letters to basically every Australian manufacturing in an attempt to bully them out of the market. And basically still to this day in 2024, all brands that have the true ties to the real history of Uggs, as convoluted and as confusing as it is, are practically confined to selling only within Australia even though literally every other brand has more direct ties to the original name and where they're manufactured and everything that makes Uggs what they are. So is this a classic case of an American corporate giant buying a reputable brand with history just to turn around and bully the small makers out of the market, all while lowering the quality in the never ending pursuit of more and more margins to a point where they're just a shadow of their former selves or is this a case of one company seeing a great opportunity to rise to the top of a market that nobody truly has a claim to and protect the time and money invested into their product? Well, that's what we're gonna try to figure out. So what are these boots? We'll start with the American Uggs that we've been talking about. So the brand is Ugg. The style is the classic short two. They weigh just under 12 ounces. They retail for $180 and they were made in China. It's an important part. Then if we go to the contender, the, the brand is Wild Wool Australia. The style is the women's classic mid. They weigh 15 ounces, a little bit heavier. They retail for $179, $1 cheaper than the uh, American Uggs, and they're made in Australia instead of China. And that matters to some people, especially when it comes to Uggs, where the original one came from Australia and the American Uggs is having them made in China. So around the same price, but very different countries that they're made in. So which one is actually better? Well, if we start looking at the materials they use, starting with the leather and shearling first, and we're gonna call the American Uggs from the rest of this video just Uggs, and then the wild wool, we're just gonna call them wild wool, wild wool. So if you look at the Uggs leather, it's a double-faced sheepskin, and it could be sourced from anywhere from Australia, Ireland, the UK, or the United States, versus wild wool, is an A-grade double-faced Australian merino sheepskin. The thicknesses are about the same. They're both 1.8 millimeters. The puncture test is about the same as well. And the wool length is, they're both around 17, 18 millimeters. But there seems to be a difference in how full, full the wool feels. The wild wool feels a lot more full than the Uggs. The Uggs are a little bit thinner. It's just not quite as, as uh, full. I can't really think of another word for it. So which is the better shearling, which is the better leather? Well, I think the wild wool edges it out just slightly. It's a little bit fuller. It's truly made in Australia and you know exactly where it's coming from and the type of animal. So I would give the edge to wild wool. But if we look at the insole with the Uggs first, it's a non-removable sheepskin insole made from a much cheaper sheepskin and wool. Because you can see in this cross section from the original video we did, that, that leather is a lot looser. It's almost foamy. And that means that this shearling is gonna shed a lot more and it's just not gonna be as durable or as high quality because they're using a cheaper shearling. Versus the wild wools, you've got the exact same type of material. You've got the exact same wool topping the insole that the rest of the boot is made out of. Underneath, there's a little bit of foam and then you have a lasting board. And it's not that it's the exact same quality as the upper because if you look, it's still pretty fibrous and loose but I think it's a lot closer in quality. It's probably cut from more of the bellies and the, the sides and the, the worst parts of the shearling they can't use in the upper versus the Uggs is clearly just a completely different leather and it's different colors. The, the leather's a different color. So once again, I'm gonna give the edge to wild wool, even if it is just a slight edge. And then if we look at the outsoles, uh, one thing to notice or to note is the Uggs is just a little bit thicker but both of them are EVA foam. The Uggs has some extra words on there like sugar cane, EVA, or tread light, depending on 
which version you get and what that means to you. Ultimately, it's just EVA foam. And they're, they're about the same because the Uggs is a 45 Shore A measured from the bottom. The Wild Wool is a 40 Shore A from the bottom, but on the sides, they're both 30 Shore A. So basically the same with Uggs being a little bit thicker. So I would give a slight edge to Uggs, even though they're basically the exact same. And then if we look at the construction or how the upper of the boot is attached to the bottom of the boot, both use a rolled edge binding that wrap all the way around the boot. And how it's constructed is basically that edge binding connects the insole material and the lasting board to the upper. And then all of that is glued down to the outsole. So honestly, pretty much the exact same. Allegedly, Wild Wool uses an old school hammering technique and Uggs is a lot more mass manufactured, but really it's hard to point to one being better than the other because they're basically the same. So a little edge on the Wild Wools, one edge on the Uggs, but ultimately we don't know which is better until we cut them in half. So let's cut them in half and figure out which is the true Uggs. We got them cut in half, except for this one we cut in the last video. If you want to see me in leggings and a nice pair of Uggs and trash Uggs a good amount, go watch that video, I'll put the links below. If you're not subscribed, consider doing it because it's how we afford to cut brand new stuff in half every single week so that you guys know what you're spending your hard-earned money on. Spoiler. So, let's start with Uggs. So now that we can see inside the wild wool, you can tell that it's a slightly better lasting board compared to the Uggs, and it's a better counter material. Both very marginally better, but one thing that is a difference that I think matters that I didn't even notice on the first Uggs video is this counter material on the inside, I assumed it was just one sheet of, of shearling all the way down, but it's actually a separate piece right here at your heels. So technically there's a minor fell point there that the wild wolves do not have. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of differences. They're basically the exact same boot for the same price. So now which is better just generally? Remove all the story and who owns what and the original and Australia this and that. Just which one is better? I would say pretty clearly the wild wool because it has better wool. It is made in Australia rather than China. It's slightly more handmade because like allegedly there's like a hammer process in the making of this. A better insole, even if it is slightly. A better lasting board, slightly. Less shedding and less fail points, which to me actually matters. So all of the subjective things equal, wild wool to me is clearly better. But now to the real question we try to answer with this video, who is the real UGG brand? Honestly, to me, it's nobody. You know, nobody has a strong enough claim to say that they're the true original Uggs. And I think the US corporate Ugg has the least claim based off of their history and by where it's made and how it's made, the materials and where they're sourced from. But even though I, I just don't think anyone should be able to claim that they're the original Uggs or prevent other people from using the word Ugg, even if it is a legitimate legal trademark in the United States, it's clear that it was a general term well before any of these brands really had the right or even thought to claim it. And I think it should be up to whoever makes the best product, who sells it the best, and ultimately what the consumer wants instead of all this legal battle and, and all these uh, trademarks and all this corporate BS, which is a huge part and a huge thing that we cover in this channel over and over and over again. Because if all companies are doing is chasing margins, the end consumer is the one that ends up paying for it. So let me know what you think. Who do you think is the real Ugg maker? And if you know a better version or someone that has a better claim to be the original Uggs, let me know. And for even more wool and shearling content, check out the bunny boot video, the Mickey Mouse boot video. We did a collaboration with Goral because Uggs look stinking comfortable. And I wanna wear them more than just as B-roll with leggings on in videos. I wanted a pair of manly Uggs, so we made a, a pair of mugs with Goro. So check out those videos. And thank you for supporting all the different channels that we do and the handmade leather goods we make here in the shop that make all this possible. So thank you guys. See you.